Good evening, ish, ladies and gentlemen. What do you know? Diplomacy works. The ship has reached the shore. Nearly two decades to get here, but the planet at least has a plan to keep a third of our oceans free from industrial fishing, mining, dumping, weapons testing, and any other form of human interference and damage. Five years to keep that 30-30 pledge, leaving 30% of international high seas for nature and do it by 2030. Five short years. Your hard work, your dedication, your commitment um, to wanting to make this a success is the reason why we are here today. Delivery, though, is everything. There are problems yet to be ironed out, but the plan exists, and with the agreement of over 100 countries. China, the EU, US and UK leading partners, with galvanising pressure from the global south to get it all over the line. More widely, it is a UN diplomatic triumph. We had the Montreal deal on ozone way back in 1987. Nobody talks about the ozone hole now. We had the Paris climate deal in 2015, still just about possible. Then the UN wildlife deal again in Montreal in December, pledging to protect a third of our biosphere by 2030. Not possible without this 30-30 deal for our oceans. We have created a system of ecological conservation red lines to include in key ecological function areas and sensitive ecosystems and given them appropriate protection, which is unique in the world. There are many days when commentators and the media rightly hold the UN to account. Today, though, a day to note how well global cooperation can sometimes work. Tomorrow is Monday morning after the emotion and exhaustion the hard work of implementation begins. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Simon Walmsley, Chief Marine Advisor at the Worldwide Fund for Nature, who was in New York for the historic deal. I asked him how significant the agreement is. It's a, it's a, great, a great day today. This is for 42% of the planet, the high seas. And before we had the treaty, before we had this agreement, we didn't have a mechanism for creating high seas marine protected areas, not a universally recognised mechanism. So it would have been very, very difficult to deliver the 30 by 30 for 42 percent of the planet without this treaty. And it's legally binding. It's not, you know, oh, yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll do our best. This is the law, right? Yeah, it is an international legal, legally binding in instrument. And it should it should have that kind of power and states should adhere to it, and it's been agreed, and once it's implemented, hopefully that will be now, the case. But in practice, we're talking about these marine protection areas, amongst other things, nature reserves in the ocean. We've had them around the UK for a long time. A lot of people say they're just paper reserves, they exist on paper, but not in fact. Fishermen, trawlers make a mess of them every day that we're alive. How will this be different? So the, the MPAs around the UK, the, the difficulties is that they don't have management plans. They don't have a plan for implementation. What we're talking about in the high seas is, is a totally different scale, totally different ball game, And it, it will rely on enhanced cooperation. So really, the high seas treaty is a way of cooperating, a way of bringing together those existing management regimes and new regimes like the one I just mentioned on establishing marine protected areas, to bring all those together. So we, we have mechanisms of enforcement. We have things like uh, satellite monitoring. We have uh, remote sensing. But we also have these existing management measures as well. And we're hoping that these will improve under these enhanced cooperation mechanisms. How does this marry with the very recent, back only in December, Montreal agreement also to safeguard 30% of our biodiversity by 2030? Well, it might marries very well because CBD uh, is 48% of the planet and the High Seas Treaty is 42% of the planet. So without the High Seas Treaty, it would be very, very difficult to deliver what the CBD is asking, the, the Convention for Biological Diversity with this global biodiversity framework and this 30 by 30 target because there wasn't this mechanism before the treaty and now there is this mechanism and this mechanism is on establishment of marine protected areas and it's based on science and it looks at networks of marine protected areas so how these networks link up and the other important thing with the uh, 
with the treaty is that it's not just about these marine protected areas. It's also about protecting, for instance, whales in the whole of their migratory routes. So not, not in small areas where they might congregate, but in the whole of their migratory routes because they're threatened from, from when they start traveling to when they finish traveling. So great whales and, and similar, similar organisms like turtles, seabirds will be protected along their whole migration route. So when you say, oh, we have these great big fat conferences, thousands of people, loads of carbon, fly around the world for just a hot air shot, what do you say? Well, I think we've, we've come to an agreement uh, in New York this weekend, and I, I'm hoping that this agreement will be Im implemented consistently and quickly as possible, and we'll see that our oceans aren't degraded <laughs> as badly as they were, and hopefully there'll be an improvement in, in the next ensuing years. Simon, thanks very much indeed, and good luck with the implementation, the hard bit.